Alan MEP, member of the Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs Committee at the European Parliament, is on the line from Brussels. Good morning to you. Good morning. And I imagine you would endorse very strongly that last view, that this can't be something that's dealt with by Italy and, and Malta alone. Of course, of course. I think it's terrible. If you think about it, we were faster in having a common European cemetery than, uh, in the, of course, the Mediterranean Sea, uh, than the so-called common European asylum system that we need and that we've been waiting for since 1999. I mean, in Tampere, we were talking about this. It's It's been going for 20 years now and we're still waiting. That's the fact. And uh, we clearly face a lack of political will by the European governments, you know. What the British government says is that, yes, there was a search and rescue uh, operation. It finished last year. The British government wanted it to finish because it was felt that all it would do would be encourage other people to put to sea. You know, this is incredible. This is an incredible argument that we will hear sometimes, even here in Brussels, not only from some, of course, governments, but also from the commissioner once. I said, I heard this argument. I think it's crazy because, uh, I mean, with all what's happening in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, at the borders of Europe, could you really imagine that the reason why people leave is that they know that there are some boats waiting for them on the other side? I don't think so. I think that here we have a, a, um, a true... Um, uh, moral and legal obligation to give international protection. It comes from, you know, international law, European law, and we can't fail in that. So I think that if you see at the data today, you would see that from the beginning of this year to right now, the flows have become have increased uh, of 60% uh, without Mare Nostrum, the Italian operation of search and rescue. So it's not even an argument. And I feel that I don't know how they can sleep well after what's, uh, what is going on right now, because it's clear that the Triton operation that was mentioned before, mm. the European operation, is inadequate. We've, we have been saying this from the very beginning. It doesn't have the means, it doesn't have a clear mandate of search and rescue, and it doesn't go more than 30 miles from the Italian waters. So what needs to be put in its place and who should pay? Well, I think that here we need a European solution because these people are not fleeing to Italy, Spain or Greece. They're fleeing to Europe. That's why we need it. Uh, we need both a short-term response and a long-term response from Europe, from the European side. The short-term response, of course, is a European Mare Nostrum, is a European operation of search and rescue. You know, uh, the Italian operation managed to save 140,000 lives in one year. It costed 9 million per month. I know it's a lot, but Italy was facing it all Alone. So what is 9 million for 28 mm. European governments? If they really want to share responsibility, as the treaty uh, is saying at uh, Article 80, it's talking about solidarity and shared responsibility, and we're not seeing that right now. So that's the bottom line for you in the short term. We'll get to the longer term in a moment. But for the short term, y you are saying all governments, including the British governments, must come up with the money to have a new search and rescue operation. You know, it's very easy to get the uh, nice side of being in the European Union and not the rest. Here we are talking, the treaty is already talking, it's nothing new. It's talking about solidarity on common uh, uh, asylum policy and migration policy and we have to be uh, consistent with what we uh, say in the treaties. Uh, so I think yes, I think it's we need a European solution that means that all governments have to play their role. But let me say another thing. Yeah. If you look at, if you go to Lampedusa, and I went there in October, many people are asking where is Europe in front of this uh, constant tragedies and the I mean it's not the right question because if you look at the data you would discover that uh, only six member states out of 28 are uh, today dealing with 75% yes, of the whole is, requests. Isn't that the problem though that what a lot of politicians might say privately back to you is you know what actually our people in many areas of northern Europe they're desperately sad when these things happen but they don't care enough to support us politically if we do the things that you're asking us to do I mean if you are in uh, the government uh, you don't always have to run after what uh, you know uh, people think is nice or not nice to do I think we have responsibilities both on a moral and a legal uh, uh, side because also we have some responsibility on, on the situation there I mean um, the instability the dramatic situation of Syria of Libya of Egypt of Gaza last year last summer uh, don't we have something to do with it with uh, foreign policy as well so you know, I know it's very hard, but we can't let the fear of the European governments uh, in front of their public opinions uh, to stop what we morally and legally have to do as the European Union, really. Elie Schlein, uh, Italian MEP. Thank you very much. Thank you.
21 minutes past eight.